Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. Today is Christmas. Hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas time with your friends and family. You know, gathering around a Christmas feast and opening up some gifts and laying around in a fireplace with chestnuts roasting on an open fire or going underneath the mistletoe and <laughs> and grab a kiss <laughs> that sort of thing well I had a decent Christmas this year nothing special but it could have been better but I had it at my grandmother's house you know we just had uh, a wonderful dinner you know, had some gifts uh, and you know, watched some movies and all that either way because I was watching um, all the other Christmas movies. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I want to continue with the remake of the 1974 version, as we all know. Which, unfortunately, is celebrating its 10th anniversary since its release, because it was released on Christmas Day. Which actually had a controversy from the religious group, you know, stating that. Uh, it was too gory for its own good and the decision for the studio to release this movie of course the studio uh, Dimension Films and with MGM being the distributor of the movie you know they had to, they tried to find ways to actually release this movie at a different date so they thought Christmas would be the right choice for it but they knew this was wrong but hey you know there, there were some bad films that were released on Christmas Day and they somehow got away with it. <laughs> so, what do you do? <laughs> but hey, you know that you know they had controversy with uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night uh, back in 1984, and that was one of the biggest ones. And that movie wasn't released on Christmas Day; it was released in November. So this would have been, you know, after Halloween. But on the other hand, though, the movie was. Uh, pretty so-so. I mean, there were some good moments here, but there are plenty of bad ones. One thing I was curious about this movie was mostly because even though this is a remake of the 1974 classic, was that this one had uh, Michelle Trackenberg, Lacey Chabert, uh, Kate Cassidy, and, and of course uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, as well as uh, Andrea Martin, who was in the original film. So, I mean, with a cast like that, it couldn't be that bad. I mean, granted, I mean, given for what they're doing, I mean, it, it can't be that bad. It, it, it does have some humor in there, and, and I know they were going to go for a whole different story. So, this was basically a different movie from the original. So, this time, it's it, they're focusing on the killer's uh, background story. But I think the problem was, though... I think they could have done a whole lot better because I didn't like the fact that they made the killer have yellow skin and the fact that the killer had a daughter who was all grown up and well you know what happens to her turns out that yep there's a spoiler he's a guy Ugh. may I say more? oh there you go this is the first time I saw the movie as uh, the double feature with the original. Yes, I never did saw this movie. I'm so surprised that I'm actually saying this, you know, even for a film that came out 10 years ago. But it's because, I don't know. I saw the commercials, and I don't, I'm not even so sure if this was going to be a good movie or a bad movie. And by the time that film came out, I went to go see Rocky Balboa. So I didn't bother with this one. But Mia told me about this movie, and, and she loved the film too. I, I figured. Mostly because of its cast. And I, I had thoughts over it uh, over the years. Um, I couldn't find this movie anywhere, actually. <laughs> uh, not even the DVD, because it's pretty hard to find. Um, hopefully this movie gets a Blu-ray release. So anyway, it's Black Christmas, the 2006 version. 
It's based on the 1974 original, loosely based, but it's a whole different story. So there's Katie Cassidy, Kristen Cloak, Oliver Hudson, Michelle Trackenberg, who's always been best known for all the shows she's been in, the movies, you know, like Harry the Spy, you know, The Adventures of Pete and Pete, and all of that. Mary Elizabeth Winstead you know, went on to have a good career with movies like Sky High, you know, Final Destination Free, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and, and most recently, Tim Cloverfield Lane. Crystal Lowe, Lacey Chabert, always been best known for her role in Party of Five, which later she was um, doing some voice acting as Eliza Formberry in The Wild Formberries, and several others that she's been in. Andrea Martin, who was of course from the original. Karen Conobo, Dean Friss, Robert Mann, Jessica Harmon, Leela Savasta, and Kathleen Cole. It's written and directed by Glenn Morton, the same director who gave us the remake of the 70s uh, horror classic, Willard, which starred uh, Chris McGlever from Back to the Future, and it was a very underrated uh, remake that uh, definitely deserves its attention, and it's actually a lot better than the original, too. The movie begins during Christmas Eve at the Delta Alpha Kappa, a sorority house that's run by a house mother named Barbara McKenzie, who's played by Dre Martin, who lives with her sorority sisters, Kelly Presley, Lee Crosby Colvin, Kyle Audrey, Melissa Kitt, Heather Lee Fitzgerald, Lauren Hannon, Dana Mathis, Megan Helms, and Claire Crosby. All played by Katie Cassidy, Kristen Cloak, o Oliver Hudson, Michelle Trackenberg, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Crystal Lowe, Lisa Chabert, Jessica Harmon, and Leela Savasta. Uh, and during uh, that season, Barbara was telling the story that happened 15 years ago, which their sorority house turns out to be the former house of a killer named Billy Lenz. Who started out as a boy, was being born with severe jaundice you know, due to liver disease, which is of course uh, yellow skin that he has. He was constantly being abused by his mother, Constance, who was played by Karen Conobo. You know, during that one Christmas Eve, as he was um, around eight years old, Billy's mother, Constance, uh, told him that. Uh, that Santa isn't coming, but Billy's father uh, warns Billy that just don't listen to her and just go back to your room and we'll see what happens. But that is until he woke up and began to find out that there was a huge noise hoping that it would be Santa all the way on top of the roof, but it turns out that, that Constance actually murders Billy's father and buries him underground with the help of her boyfriend so this whole thing was a setup so then Constance had locked Billy in the attic to prevent him from speaking which then years later she attempted to conceive a new baby only to find out that her boyfriend is impotent so they can't have a baby but what does she do she just goes up on the attic and rapes Billy. Yeah, and Billy was 12 years old uh, at the time when this happened. So now, because of that, she now has a daughter named Agnes. So she was born, and then several years later, as uh, she turned eight years old, Agnes received a present from Constance, and her mother. Adele, you know, treating her like a princess, uh, being very nice to her. That is until Billy had finally escaped from the attic, found a better way to do so, and stabs um, 
Agnes by wrapping her up in a placid bed and just stabs her in the eye. Yeah, terrifying uh, Constance, saying that she's my family now on the phone. So then after that, kills his mother along with her boyfriend. And not only that, but he actually takes out a cookie cutter and makes Christmas cookies with his mother's flesh. Very disgusting. And was being caught by the police while eating Christmas cookies and a glass of milk sitting on the table. And was sent to a mental asylum. Now that Billy is 35 years old, during Christmas Eve, he escapes from a cell, killing off all the guards, including one that was dressed up as Santa Claus. And he wears the Santa suit and took it off and started to join with Agnes to his former home, which is now a sorority house. Which they went up to Claire's bedroom and got killed by suffocating her with a plastic bag and stabbing her in the eye with a fountain pen. Yep, just like how he did that to Agnes. And actually stuck her body in a rocking chair, which is similar to to the original film, you know, where Billy actually wrapped the victim with a plastic bag and just stuck her inside, all tied up in a rocking chair. Anyway, Megan had soon begun to suspect some noises that's coming straight out of the attic, and she went up there until she discovered Claire in the rocking chair before she got killed the same way that Claire did. So then in the living room, all the other sorority girls have received a phone call from a mysterious man who may soon be the killer as we know it, ends up calling all of them who actually threatened them to be killed. So then Claire's half-sister Lee had arrived just to search for Claire, but then we meet Eve Agnew who soon gives Heather a glass unicorn as a present before leaving the sorority house. Yep, and that was the glass unicorn that you saw in the original film, which Billy had stabbed Margot Kidder's character yeah, constantly. But when the lights went out, Dana had went to check the power under the house, but then discovers a dead corpse in the crawl space. Yeah, which turned out to be Billy's uh, fodder. And then suddenly she's being dragged underneath and was killed with a gardening tool that stabbed in her head. So then the girls have received a call from Dana's phone, only hearing a scream. So they decided to leave the house just to find Dana. But Kelly and Melissa discovered some blood spatters all around the house where Dana had, had died. While Heather and Lee had found Eve decapitated in her car, which... Yeah, in which um, Heather gets killed in the car with, with blood splattered all around the windshield. And Barbara gets killed with an icicle. Yeah, an icicle actually dropped from the roof and stabbed her. Really messed up. And if that wasn't enough, Mercer actually gets killed with an ice skate that Actus actually threw on her head they cut her off and before all the victims have been having their eyes gouged out and being hanged onto a small Christmas tree in the attic so Kelly and, and Lee are the only ones that they're alive and they're trying to escape from the two killers Billy and Agnes yeah we already know that Agnes is is basically a guy supposed to be a, a woman this doesn't make any sense I know it's just so weird so then Billy and Agnes uh, were ready to, to go after Kelly and Lee as we already revealed to them they're about to go after them until 
They started the fire, and the whole house was ready to be burned down, and they both escape. You know, with Billy and Agnes already inside the house. And they would soon, um, they soon wound up in the hospital. So that after they recovered, the magician had opened up Billy's body bag, who, who basically had survived, and killed him with a drill. While Kelly went to go for an x-ray, Agnes suddenly appears unharmed and kills Lee by stabbing her neck. So Kelly returns to her room only finding blood filled with lights and lights in the ceiling. Yeah, Agnes just enters through the ceiling, attacks her as well, before Kelly just kills Agnes with a defibrillator and less accuse him. Just before Billy had showed up um, through the ceiling and chases Kelly all the way to the stairwell until he, until he fell all the way down onto the Christmas tree. So he's now, so his whole body had went on top of, of the Christmas tree, already killed. And his body just went straight through the Christmas tree. <laughs> and yep, the movie ends just like that. What can I say? As I haven't said already, it's a very so-so remake. I mean, I'll tell you the good. The cast was was very good in the film, I'll give you that. I mean, given for what they were doing, they, they were coming up with a lot of funny dialogue and some memorable humor that I, I can deal with. I mean, it was great to see uh, Michelle Trackenberg uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead and, and Lazy Chabur in a movie like this because it's, it's kind of strange for, for all three, well at this rate, Michelle Trackenberg and, and Lazy Chabur to be in a horror movie, but Mary Elizabeth Winstead was already in a horror movie herself because that same year she was in Final Destination 3, yeah, which set place at a roller coaster, which I thought that was interesting. Because, um, you know, roller coasters can be scary. So it makes sense. <laughs> um, but, of course, I mean, it's kind of depressing at times having to see all three of these actresses getting killed. I mean, you thought you expected one of the girls that were going to probably survive, but they haven't. Um, yeah, so it turns out that Katie Cassidy was probably the only one that survives all of that. So there was like several uh, death scenes that just becomes as we speak. I mean it's mostly you know the victims getting stabbed in the eye and they want to they want up eating their eyes or want to collecting them or putting them on the ground or anything like that or even hanging it up as an ornament on a Christmas tree. I mean yeah it seems like I mean, it's, it's just, it just seems rather gross when they have to put that in there. And, and, I don't know. But I gotta say, it does seem well made when they, when it comes to the gory effects that they use in this movie. So, I gotta say, they, they did a good job with that. And it was also great to see Andrea Martin uh, playing a house mother this time. Because she used to play the sorority sister in the original movie. So, it works pretty well. I know originally they were going to get Margot Kidder to play the role, but you know, she refused, so there you go. It's funny because uh, the main reason why she chose the role was because she hadn't even thought about the, the original for years, and we thought maybe this would be okay. So there you go. Um, but I thought the film could have been so much better handled, too. I mean, it's... It's okay to have a killer's background story. I mean, it's always good to see what was it like um, before he became the killer. But I didn't like the fact that they had to make the killer have yellow skin. It was a stupid idea. It didn't make any sense to me. I mean, why can't they just have the killer just have normal skin as we know it? It just really feels insulting. Now, that wasn't bad enough. I mean, they had to make Agnes look like a guy. 
which he pretty much is a guy. I mean, it's just it just doesn't make any sense. I mean, they, they should have done so much better with that. So it, that didn't work. Um, and I think the idea of actually having their eyes being gouged out just. I know because they want to go for a gory effect. It just gets uh, really old real fast. I mean, it seems like they might as well just call the movie Eye Christmas or Black Guy Christmas instead. <laughs> so why call it Black Christmas if, if all your eyes have been gouged out from your head? Yeah, seriously. Um. But I have to admit, the death scenes uh, between the actresses of uh, Michelle Trackenberg, per se, it, it's kind of, it, you do kind of feel uncomfortable having to see uh, Michelle just being, being killed by an ice skate that Agnes had just threw on her, just when she was about to open up the window and escape from the killer. Um, hard to believe, because she just did an ice skating movie called Ice Princess you know, before this. But I find it funny though because Michelle Trackenberg actually said in, in her interviews that she can only do this movie if her character gets killed. So <laughs> there you go. So she wanted that to happen. So it's really her fault. There you go. Well what happened to Michelle Trackenberg pretty much sums it up. She hasn't done a good movie since. What was the last good movie that I saw her in? I think it was uh, Ice Princess and Mysterious Skin. Yeah, that was the last two movies I, I could think of right now. I think there might be a couple more films she has done that were good, but otherwise, yeah, it's pretty much those two films. Well, at least Mary Elizabeth Winston has a career. She went on to do uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World <laughs> and 10 Cloverfield Lane, so she lives. And Lacey Chabert is just stuck doing all these Hallmark Channel movies. And you know, she hasn't done anything much ever since. And I think she was doing independent movies too. So there you go. I don't know if she still does voice acting, but I think she might continue with it. But yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, the rest of the characters, uh, given for what they're doing, they're okay. Um, you do have a character who's just drunk all the time, you know, just like Margaret Kidder's character was. But she vomits, uh, you know, she had to change, and, you know, you see the killer, uh, peeking in the, in the girl's shower, you know, from the on the bottom of, of the floor with all these um, pieces come out there you go yeah and, and then you have Andrea Martin getting killed by an icicle well the main reason why the film had a controversy was because the religious group um, uh, the Christian group actually said that this this movie was just too gory to be released on Christmas and it was a bad idea to be released anyway because they, they weren't even... The problem is, though, was the studio had trouble trying to find a release for this movie. I do agree the film could have been released, like, in early December, before Christmas arrives. Because I think then the film would have been easier enough for people to see it. Surprisingly, it was a modest uh, box office success. And there you go. Um, the score was actually good, I'll give you that. Uh, Shirley Walker did a great score. It gives it that eerie uh, feel to it. Uh, the cinematography was also very good, too. Some good editing right there by Robert uh, McLaughlin and and Chris uh, Wilmingham. There was an unrated cut for the movie, which uh, they probably added some more um, gruesome scenes that, that became too gory to be shown in theaters. They probably added some more scenes that they didn't make it into the final cut. Although surprisingly the trailer actually had scenes that were not even in the movie at all. And that's when I noticed too. When I saw it. 
so there you go. And the movie only cost nine million dollars uh, when for its budget, uh, only making a profit right there. So anyway, but I think the film could have been done better, um, despite of its moments. But it's not the worst remake I've seen so far as we know it. I mean, there have been so many bad remakes out there, it's mostly horror remakes, you know, like The Hitcher, uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Prom Night, The Stepfather, uh, you name it, all of these uh, unnecessary remakes. I mean, they're just they're terrible compared to this. But at least this one tried. I mean, they tried so hard, but they could have done so much better. They didn't have to go for for the killer having yellow skin and the fact that they had to make the you know, Agnes a guy and all of that and then and it may and just have a background story, you know, written better per se. So then I think we would have had a better movie. But it wouldn't be better than the original, that's for sure, because the original still remains as a classic to this day and always will be. Whereas this one would just be a good idea, but but it just could have done, but it just suffers. So that's Black Christmas from 2006, and I give that film two stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. Have a happy and safe Merry Christmas, and I'll see you later. Bye.